Earth-shaking forces beneath us interrupt life only occasionally. But unfolding constantly above us is the clash of great forces we know as weather. The fluid gases of the atmosphere can unleash devastating power. This is home to some of the most severe storms on Earth. A Midwestern region of the United States known as Tornado Alpha. Conditions are uh, pretty favorable for some explosive thunderstorm development. Back some that's going on right now. There's going to be a threat of severe thunderstorms, large hail. Storms continue to intensify. Take your tornado precautions. Do it now. On May 3, 1999, an extraordinary series of tornadoes ripped through Oklahoma and left behind almost unimaginable destruction. As I remember two by fours snapping, just snapped like toothpicks, you know? Everybody says, you know, what do they sound like? And it sounded pretty much like a freight train. But if you were underneath the train, the house was gone. And I haven't found the refrigerator yet. I looked out across the street, and I said, there's no houses across the street. I can see until 4th Street. Many survivors were warned in time, thanks in part to an unconventional team of scientists. It was these Doppler radar trucks venturing close to the 1999 storms that clocked the fastest wind speed ever recorded near the ground, 301 miles per hour. Dr. Joshua Werman and his team spend months each year chasing tornadoes, hoping to get a radar's eye view inside them. For a long time, I have dreamed of solving the biggest mystery about tornadoes, how they're born. My goal is to get a three-dimensional picture of the wind speed and wind direction within the storm. But first, we have to position our two trucks on different sides of the storm at roughly a 90-degree angle and be in just the right place as a tornado begins. We don't know exactly how a tornado starts, but we do know what precedes it. Here, warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico rushes upwards through cooler air, forming a thunderstorm. Some of the rising air cools and sinks, or is dragged down by rain and hail. The warm air racing in at the bottom can actually push on the higher winds aloft, sort of tilting them and forming a large spinning column. Somehow, down near the ground, between the air rushing up and the air rushing down, the spinning dramatically intensifies. The thing that fascinates me is that only some storms spawn tornadoes. If we could figure out which ones, we could warn people earlier. That's why we drive about 10,000 miles every spring.
Most of the time, we miss the tornadoes. It's incredibly difficult. I've been trying for years. Near the end of one recent season, the team received word that a violent storm was developing, one that might spawn an outbreak of tornadoes. The challenge would be getting there in time. Okay, both cells look pretty good. Um, both have uh, hooks on them. The western one looks like it has a better hook on it now. It's a drill they've been through many times, one fraught with frustrations. An empty gas tank. Empty stomachs. Inevitable indigestion. And unpredictable delays. This day would prove even more eventful than usual. The uh, shoulders are a bit muddier than I had expected. Uh, I tried to rock it back and forth, which it went backwards and is quite stuck. The storm was coming right at them. All they had to do was get unstuck. After years of near misses, Josh Werman's team was in perfect position. And this storm was cooperating. First time ever, the team succeeded in recording with two Doppler radars conditions within a storm at the moment the tornado formed. The data will take years to analyze, but it promises to help unravel the secret of how this tornado was born. It was a victory for science, for Josh Werman and his crew, and for those whose lives will one day be safer because of their efforts. As scientists, we yearn to witness the unknown, to see things that have never been seen before. Hundreds of years ago, that would have been new rivers or new islands. For me, that unknown is the inside of a tornado. Working to decipher powerful events like a volcanic eruption is really searching for patterns that will alert us when something terrible is imminent so that every human life at risk can be saved.
Only 19 people died here on Montserrat. But that's 19 too many. Several hundred million people live along the world's most active earthquake fault zones. So it's critical we get better at forecasting quakes. If these and other scientists can add a little bit to our understanding, then one day the pieces will fit together. And we have that power to explore, to learn, to find ways of surviving, no matter how powerful the forces that confront us. Thank <laughs> you. 